Okay. Uh, from or the fifth question from De Jesus. In your opinion, what is the best way we as a community can help you promote StarCraft II as an esport here in North America? I feel like a lot of us would love to help in one fashion or another, but do nothing outside of turning it into uh, tuning into casts, paid or free. Yeah. Well, first of all, I love the fact that he said, "What can we do for you?" That's an awfully nice thing because it makes me have power. Well, I would probably say the big thing is to, um, on an individual level, the only reason that I ever had any success is because I was so proud of how much I love StarCraft. I thought that StarCraft was the coolest thing ever, and I would invite people into my room when they were in the suite because the matches were on. And I, I mean, that's really the beginnings of my commentary was in like 2006 when I just have a friend over and be going, ooh, now that is really scary because of this and this and this and this and this. Because everyone knew I played, so they kind of wanted to inquire as to why I was jizzing my pants at my computer during some of these matches, like GG Play against Iris. Oh my god, I still remember how amazing that series was. Um, and if anyone didn't understand, I wouldn't sort of shamefully hang my head down and sort of wallow in a corner and go, no, what, it's just you know, it's just a game I'm into. I would be like StarCraft II, or excuse me, and at that time StarCraft Brood War is the coolest thing ever, and I would just be so into it. And in a sense, it's like I didn't even need courage because I was almost oblivious to their judgment of me. I, I was literally speaking purely from the heart and purely from my own passion, and people are very receptive to that. And so I'd be delighted if more people just went to people that they knew and just told StarCraft stories, said how amazing it was that Idra, this player who was trying to use the match history to learn about his opponent, got one up and his opponent pulled out a cheese at the last minute and ended up taking a victory. And when he crumbled, it was a huge deal. You don't need to know that much about the game. All you need to know is the story. And the story's juicy, baby. Um, in terms of like larger, more organized efforts, <laughs> feel free to direct them to the Day 9 Daily, direct them to your favorite episode. Would always love to see that viewership number swell like some sort of glorious tumor. Um, but let, let, let's see here. Let's see here. Um, I think that one thing the community could definitely do that would be great is to, you know, again, use those words. Elevate the level of discourse around the game. So often on forums, people's number one goal is to be right. Not to help anyone out or to delve deeper into some body of knowledge and find juicy bits of information. It's to look at Johnny Bo 27 and to shit all over him in a public fashion and go, yeah, I'm smarter than Johnny Bo. You know, and that is actually useless. Um, so I strongly encourage anyone who's listening to this to take it upon themselves that when they see something in a forum to contribute and to be positive and no matter how negative someone becomes, sidestep it and just keep being positive and mature and intellectual and respectful and all that good jazz. Um, that, that, yeah, 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 and cheer loud and never, never, never stop loving the game, yeah! Okay. Uh, question number six is from Feargorm, a mod at the StarCraft subreddit. So, yeah. what do you think it, uh, it will take for the center of top-level StarCraft II to shift to America? Can we achieve a culture where we have domestic pro gaming houses on par with those in Korea? Do we even need them? Um, I definitely think that there will come a point where pro gaming houses will become m more standard. The one thing I think people don't talk enough about the advantage of a pro gaming house is that when you're around people who are really, really good, they just say things to you that you're like, oh, I didn't, never actually thought of that. So you kind of like pick up little tidbits a lot faster. Like for instance, this never occurred to me. I was sitting next to Huck at IEM and he said, yeah, when I'm scouting a, a Protoss opponent's base, I click on his nexus to look at his energy. And if his energy is really high, I know he's preparing to do some sort of huge four warp gate strategy or just some sort of extremely fast warp gate. So then I chrono boost my warp gates as well. And I, I, I just, it had never occurred to me that you could check the energy on a building because like you couldn't do that in Brood War. I was just like, oh, oh my God, oh. You know, and it, it, it's not one of those practice wouldn't have revealed that to me. You know, it's kind of like that little bit of information. So I would, I would love to see that sort of stuff happen. 
But um, I think that what, you know, to answer the what will it take question, I think that it will take someone who's really trying to drive forward and to push it. Because people keep standing around saying, well, when is esports going to happen? And people are waiting around for it to happen. And that's a really a big goal of mine, is to make it happen. I want to be the force that actually pushes it forward. Because, I mean, interestingly enough, like poker, poker became big because of one guy, Peter Lipscomb about the way he framed the game and presented it to mass audiences in a way that they would be receptive to it. And um, I think that, you know, as much as people want to say it'll take corporate sponsorship, it'll take this, it'll take that, um, it's, it's really, it needs one cohesive director to sort of push it forward in a coherent fashion. Okay. Uh, so the seventh question from Erlix, do you feel about, uh, how do you feel about the almost stalkerish Reddit community? Is it something you find flattering to find constant posts about you or <laughs> annoying? And uh, I know you are grateful for your fans, but do you ever think that it goes a little far? Um, yeah, I don't, I've never felt offended or weirded out, like, ever about that. I, I'm like, it, it makes me, like, feel really nice because, again, I, I don't have any problems with weird fans. Every, everyone who watches the stream who's ever given me any feedback has been so overwhelmingly positive. Like, I think I, I'll actually tell a story in a minute, but I think I've only had like one or two people in my life ever make me kind of go, well, that was weird. <laughs> um, I think the weirdest aspect to it all is that I, I don't, I don't feel like a famous person. I don't even want to claim that I am a famous person because to be frank, I'm still the same idiot who stays up till five in the morning watching the Korean matches because I'm like, I'll just watch another game. And then the next day at school, it's like 8.30 and I'm like, I am going to give the worst presentation of my entire life and I'm not sure it was worth it. And lo and behold, that night, I'm up till five in the morning again, right? That's who I am as a person and that's not going to change anytime soon. Um there was a point to me saying that whole little dialogue there uh oh yeah yeah so i don't um i don't ever feel like Ugh, excuse me i they need to treat me like i'm the important person that i am Ugh, like with my cigar and my monocle and my weird curly mustache it makes me look like a french train robber i, I sincerely hope that i never hit that point because if i did i would eagerly eagerly wait for the community to bash me to pieces so that I can sort of hit back to the, my normal equilibrium. Um, yeah. Oh, but here's here's a fun story. So I, I, I've said that almost everyone, actually I'd probably say that like, again, with only one or two exceptions, everyone's been so unbelievably nice and supportive and encouraging and just normal. Everyone I've talked to speaks to me like I am a person, which feels wonderful. But every so often you'll get a person who comes up and says, hey, hey, uh, you're day nine, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, I think what you're doing is pretty good. But, I mean, there's a lot of stuff you say that I don't uh, really agree with. I think your, your, your analysis can be off at times. But, I mean, I think, I think it, on the whole it has a positive effect. And I'm like, thank you. You know, that's like, that's like going up to your prom date and saying, sweetie, you don't sweat much for a fat girl. You know, you just – it's not quite right. But, uh, but, you know, that's the sort of thing that you're kind of like, oh, well, that's – well, that's weird. Whatever. And then uh, there's just giant droves of unbelievably nice people at the end of the day. So, so huge hearts to Reddit, man. I, 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 I try not to actively search for myself because that would be rather pretentious. But whenever I stumble across something, it, it, it warms my heart quite a bit. Okay. Now, uh, I think one of the best questions we have here, number eight from Aeon Stripe. Aliens from a faraway galaxy have invaded. We can say that they're either Zerg or Protoss, but we're not too sure. If you could pick five people, real or fictional, to defend us from our potential extraterrestrial overlords, who would they be? And uh, I'm actually going to change this. You're going to have to explain why you choose um, each person. Jeez, five people to defend from intergalactic invasion. Well, let's see here. I'm going to have to do some thinking on this one. Trying to sort through celebrities. Hmm. Who do I know who is very strong of will? Um, I guess I guess one that would be on the list. Probably not my top choice, but I'll just kind of throw them out there. 
would be uh, Mickey Rourke. Uh, current Mickey Rourke, because, like, you see him in Iron Man, and he's just, like, got real tattoos, and he has that sort of grungy hair. It's just, like, so manly that I would love to see him just pick up uh, an alien and crush him under his under his biceps. Um, who else? Who else would I like? Um, I Five people. And I was supposed to do this on no prep? Gosh, man, now you're starting to see me crumble under the pressure. <laughs> Oh my goodness. You know what? I'll actually, I'll leave it at Mickey Rourke for now. We'll come back to it. Let, let's go to the next question and I'll answer it without even understanding what I'm saying. And then hopefully I'll have four more <laughs> names for you. Okay. Oh, no way. Hold on. Ben Franklin. Who am I kidding? Ben motherfucking Franklin, ladies and gentlemen. That guy is such a badass because here's what makes Ben Franklin such a hero. Whenever he didn't have the tool to get what he needed done, he just invented it, he invented it, you know? So he'd be like, oh, it's, it's so hard for me to turn the pages to my book. I'll invent a page turner. Where by the press of this button and the motion of these gears, I'll turn my page automatically. Like, he was such a sick hero. Um, the prostitution thing, I, I suppose, is a, little, is a little concerning, but, you know, that's not something you need to worry about when, you know, you're battling giant aliens. I don't know if you guys were familiar with this, but he was he was definitely into the ladies in a in a morally questionable way. And he'd always you'd always read his letters in uh, elementary school where he'd be like writing to his wife. He's like, "Dearest Elizabeth, woefully I must stay overseas another month." <laughs> and you're like, "I know what you're up to, B. Franklin." But he would be like the sickest hero uh, to deal with intergalactic invasion, in my humble but entirely correct opinion. <laughs> 